Hi, I'm Nathan from Pi3G and today I will show you how to build a fully remote weather station using a solar-powered Raspberry Pi Pico W. We will use a BME688 sensor to track some weather data that you can display directly on your smartphone browser. The weather station can even operate at night as it uses the excess power to charge a lithium-ion battery. Let's first check out the required components and how to wire everything up. The first component is the solar module. You should use one that outputs at least 6 volts and 150 milliamps. The next component is a lithium ion battery of type 18650 that outputs 3.7 volts. A TP4056 module will be responsible for protecting the battery and powering the Pico W. And finally, we need a BME688 breakout board or any other environmental sensors to track the weather data. I start by placing the Pico W onto a breadboard. This allows me to easily connect all the other components and I can also add some additional sensors later on. Then I place the BME688 breakout board next to the Pico W and wire up its I2C interface. Connect the SDA pin to the first pin on the left side of the Pico W. Then connect the SDL pin to the second pin on the left side, the ground pin to the third pin on the left side and finally the 33 volts pin to pin number 5 on the right side. Of course, you could use any other environmental sensor that you have at hand. Now we need to solder some wires to the TCP4056 module. It's good practice to use red wires for the positive connections and black wires for the ground connections. The pins to the left and right of the USB-C connector are for an external power connection like our solar module. The outermost pins on the other side are for the power output. The pins labeled B plus and B minus need to be hooked up to the battery. To connect our solar module, we can just use the screw clamps on the back. After that, we could solder a battery holder directly to the TP4056, but I chose to use some clamp connectors so that I can easily replace parts if they break. Now we just have to put the battery into the battery holder. Since we still want to be able to power the Pico from USB, we need to connect a Schottky diode to the VSYS pin of the Pico W. This is pin number 2 on the right side. And you have to make sure that the grey ring on the diode is facing towards the Pico. This will prevent the Pico W from backpowering and maybe even damaging our battery. Now all that's left to do is to connect the positive power output to the Schottky diode and the negative power output to a ground pin of the Pico W. And with that the circuit is complete and we can put everything into a protective housing. Now let's have a look at the code. If you have seen one of our other examples, most parts of the code should look familiar to you. If you need a refresher on how to set up MicroPython and Thony for the Pico W, then check out this video. The code for this project can be found on our Pico W GitHub repository. The link is in the description. The project code contains two Python files and one HTML file, as well as a lib directory that contains all the important modules. All you have to do is to download and unzip everything and copy it onto the Pico W. The bme68x.py file contains the bme68x class that represents our sensor. You can manually set the bme68x sea level pressure and temperature offset properties in the constructor so that you get correct altitude and temperature readings. The class also contains methods to read and save the data in a JSON file. That way you can download the data onto your PC and process it further. The main.py file contains some helper functions to blink the onboard LED for status indication, print the data and load the HTML file. Then the Pico W gets configured as a soft access point so that we don't need a router to connect over Wi-Fi. We set up a WebSocket and blink the onboard LED three times in case there were no errors. In the main loop we load the HTML file if we detect a connection. Then we trigger a measurement and replace the corresponding parts in the HTML file by the correct measurement values. The index.html is just a simple HTML file with some basic styling. There are also placeholder strings for all the parameters that we can measure with the BME688. In the header we trigger an automatic refresh every 3 seconds. Back in the main.py file we just send the response and close the connection. The main.py file will run automatically if the Pico W is powered up, but we need to run it once in the Thony IDE to see the IP address of the Pico W. If the Pico W is powered up, wait until it blinked three times. Then in the Wi-Fi settings of your device you should be able to connect to a wireless network that contains Pico in the name. For some reason the SSID and password settings are not working yet. 
but this will likely be fixed in a future MicroPython version for the Pico W. If you are connected to the Pico W's wireless network, open your browser and copy in the Pico W's IP address. You should see all the measurement values and it should update every 3 seconds. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel as we will post videos like this on a weekly basis. Also, check out our store by zero to pick up everything you need for your Raspberry Pi projects.